Now let's go on to naming acids and bases. First, let's talk about the acids and bases that do not have oxygen. So to name an acid that does not have an oxygen in it, you're going to take the root of the anion, and then we throw on some prefixes. You throw in hydro on the front, ic on the back, followed by the word acid. So these hopefully will be pretty straightforward for you. For example, HF. If I want to name this guy, I'm going to take the root of the anion. So the hydrogen takes a positive charge, F takes a negative. So this is fluorine on the periodic table, fluoride in the ion side, so this floor is obviously the root. So I'm going to take hydro and stick it on the front of that floor that we already mentioned. I'm going to put ic on the back and the word acid. So HF is hydrofluoric acid. Let's try another one. This is cyanide. So my, <clears throat> my root in the middle is that cyan. So I have hydro on the front, ic on the back with the acid. This is hydrocyanic acid. Again, notice the lack of O's in all of these. Now let's go the other way, hydrobromic. So hydro and the ic mean that I have no oxygens in here. Tells me there's an H on the front. Brome is the root for bromide, so this is HBr. One more, hydrochloric. Everybody knows this one. There's that chlor in the middle. Hydro and ic mean that I have no oxygens in there. So this is HCl. But what happens when your acid has an oxygen in it? So acids with oxygens are also known as oxyacids because of that oxygen. So for oxyacids, you're going to be looking at the root of the central atom of that oxyanion. So instead of looking at just the plain old anion, most of these are polys. So we're looking at the central atom of that poly. So sulfate, my central atom is sulfur. Here's phosphate. We have phosphorus in the middle. Nitrate. We have the N in the middle. So we're looking at the central atom of that oxyanion. Our suffix for our acid is also going to depend on that anion. So if our original ion ended in 8, now my acid is going to end in ic. If my ion ended in ite, my, ion, my acid excuse me, will end in us. So a couple of examples for you. This first one here, sulfate, we already said that the central atom in that sulfate ion is the S, so this is going to be a sulf something. Since this is sulfate, ends in A-T-E, my acid will end in ic. So this is sulfuric acid. Over here we have H3PO4 or excuse me, PO3. PO3 is sulfite. Sulf excuse me, I can't talk bloody blasted monkey. Phosphite. Phosphite just has one less O, so my P is still in the middle. So this is going to be a phosphor something acid. Since it ends in ite, this is phosphite. My acid is going to end in us, so this is phosphorus acid. Next example, HNO3, HNO2. My brain is not functioning. It's okay. Nitrite. So the nitrogen is in the middle. Since this is nitrite, this is nitrous acid. One more. Chlorite. So this is chlor us acid. Going the other way, sulfurous acid, that O U S, tells me that my poly is an ite ion. So that would be our SO3. SO3 has a 2 minus charge, so I'm going to need two hydrogens to counteract it. One more. 
phosphoric acid. Ick tells me my ion ends in ATE, so phosphate. PO4 has a 3 minus charge. I'll need 3 H's to counteract that PO4. Bases, however, have no special naming to them, so they're a little bit simpler. NaOH is sodium hydroxide. CaOH2 is calcium hydroxide. So hopefully that helps demystify naming a bit. You'll get fa fairly familiar with them pretty quickly because there aren't that many acids and bases that you will encounter on a regular basis. Next couple of videos, we will be getting into neutralization reactions. So, see you there.